From Chicago, we invite you to enjoy life. Fight with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash with Alan Reed. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now, we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, America is full of wonderful surprises. And yesterday is one more surprise for me. In Italy... If you want to grow a tree, it takes a couple of years. But here in America, it happened overnight. <laughs> Yesterday, I passed a big lot on a corner Halstead Street. It's empty. This morning, I passed the same lot, and the Mamma Mia is a whole forest of a Christmas tree. <laughs> I guess the soil in Chicago is a pretty good. Or maybe fella, he used a special kind of seed because each tree she grow with a little price tag on a branch. <laughs> right now is a big holiday excitement all over America. And the signs all over, they say, there's only four or more shopping days until Christmas, so shop now, hurry up. <laughs> I begin to hurry. Then I look in my pockets. For me, it's a no rush. <laughs> Pasquale, my countryman, who owns a spaghetti palace next to my antique shop, and who bring me to this country, he tries to give me a surprise yesterday. He invited me in his house. He hangs a six yards of mistletoe over the head of his fat daughter, Rosa. <laughs> then he tells me to kiss her. Mamma mia, is it more fun to kiss the mistletoe? <laughs> Anyway, I'm not thinking about the Rosa right now. Is there no school this week for little kids? So my 12-year-old general manager, Jimmy O'Connor, he's having a good time. This afternoon, he comes back from a park and he say, What's on the fire, boss? You smell a smoke, Jimmy? I mean, what's cooking? It's a little early for supper. <laughs> no, boss. I mean, what's doing? Jimmy, please. If there's a three ways of saying the same thing, say it the right way first time. <laughs> All right, boss, I'll watch myself. And while you're watching yourself, watch English language, too. Sometimes I don't know which one of us is a foreigner. <laughs> okay, boss. Hey, what you doing? What's that book? I'm just to buy what they call a ledger. So for New Year, we start the bookkeeping. What we really need around here is an efficiency expert. Who's that, Jimmy? Well, an efficiency expert is someone who keeps checking on you all the time. Oh. Tells you what to buy and not to buy. And keeps after you to make more money. In America, that's called an efficiency expert. In Italy, is it called the wife? <laughs> Look, boss, you have to change your business methods. What do you mean? Well, like yesterday. You bought a chair for $30, right? Right. And you sold it for $20. Why? Keeps the merchandise moving. <laughs> but, boss, that's not good business. Take any other businessman around here. I guess you're right, Jimmy. That's the fellow on the next block. He buys all the things for $100, $200, sells it for $800 to $900. But, boss, he doesn't sell antiques. He sells used cars. Same thing. <laughs> all right, Jimmy. Beginning tomorrow, I be good the businessman. No more buying, just the selling. What's wrong with starting today? Because I buy something else today. Oh, no, boss. Oh, yes, Jimmy. See? It's right in the window. That silver cup? Yes. How much? I buy it for $50. 50 It's cheap. I call up Dr. Simpson from Museum. He's going to look at it. I think it's a colonial. But, boss, that only leaves us with $20 in the bank. What can you do with $20? Don't worry. I figure out some way to spend it. <laughs> it's a customer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir. My name is Johnson. It's a fine American name. I'm a Luigi Bosco, fine Italian name. I noticed that silver mug in your window. How much are you asking for it? Too much. Well, it's for sale, isn't it? Sure. Jimmy. But Mr. Johnson wants to buy it. How do you know he wants to pay what I'm going to ask? 
Well, what are you asking for that mug? One hundred dollars. Fine. Oh, that's great. You sure you want to pay a hundred dollars? Yes. You're too anxious. How about a two hundred? <laughs> But you just said a hundred. Boss, you can't do that. Why not? All the ways a fellow who sells, he sells high price the first, and then the customer says a low price. I'm a running, my business is different. I'm a starter with a low price, and then I go up in instead of a customer coming down. <laughs> well, if I said okay to two hundred, your next price would be three hundred. That's right. That's ridiculous. Now we're getting to someplace. <laughs> I've never done business with a man like you. That's because this is the first time of you in my store. Nobody's going to pay you $300 for that cup. I hope so. That's the way it's a $300. We can't both be crazy. <laughs> I explain to you, Mr. Johnson. I only buy this a cup this morning. Well, what's that got to do with it? When I get a new thing, I like to keep for two or three months. Then maybe I sell. You're the first antique dealer I've ever seen who ages his own antiques. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Basco. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Merry Christmas. Boy. I know what you're going to say, Jimmy, but don't worry. Is it going to be other customers? Like Uncle Pietro say, is the plenty of fish in the sea. The bigger the bait, the smaller the fish. The smaller the fish, the bigger the bait. What does that mean? I don't know. I think maybe Uncle Pietro is a drunk when he say that. <laughs> now, go in the back and wash your face, Jimmy. It's all dirty. I was playing football with the other kids. That's all right. No excuse. So go ahead and wash your face. Then I'll go out and play some more football. Well, maybe I'll polish up a cup. It's a wonderful old cup. Older than the United States. People is born. Fight. Die. But a smaller silver cup for live. Hmm. Maybe I become a philosopher instead of an antique dealer. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what are you doing with a shave of the cup into your hand? It's an old mug from the time of Jefferson. It looks pretty smaller for Jefferson to shave as a mug. No, it's not the for shaving. It's old colonial silver drink in a cup. What do you talk? A cup is a cup, that's all. But there's a big difference between cups. I explain. When the people run away from Europe a long time ago, they come here without the furniture, without anything. So when a fellow want a drink, he have no cup. That's the matter with the paper cups. <laughs> Pasquale, in the olden days... Never whenever... mind, Luigi. You in the olden days, uh, old antiques, that's the trouble with you. Everything in this place is old. Even you getting old. Can't to help it. Is it not possible to get younger? That's why I'm coming over to talk to you. I'm worried about your future, my little man. I'm thinking about it, too. I save you the trouble. Because without a Pasquale, you've got no future to think about. Oh, no. No, Pasquale. In America, everybody have a future. Everybody except you. Your future, my little friend, is a past. Oh, no, Pasquale. Oh, yes, Luigi. But I'm going to give you a big future right now. See this little box? Yes. It's the Christmas present. Thank you, Pasquale. Don't attach. Luigi, in this little magic box is your whole future. It's a magic box. Hmm. Yes. Don't attach. It's like a Pandora's box. You know who is a Pandora? I meet lots of people in my business. I'm not remembering all of the names. <laughs> no, Pasquale. It's all the Greek story. I explain. Since when do you speak Greek? I explain in English. Oh. Once there was a Greek lady, Pandora. Also was a Jupiter. All right, then never mind explain. Here, take the box. No, first I explain. Luigi, take the box. Okay. Now open up. No, Pasquale, I don't marry Rosa. Wait, wait. See what's inside of the box. Oh. It's a wonderful. What is it? What is it? It's a wedding ring. Look at what's written inside. From Luigi. For Rosa. Oh, no, Pasquale, it's not even for me. Take it back. I'm not going to marry Rosa. You're not going to marry Rosa? No. You said a no? Yes. Yes? No. 
Then here's the five cents. What for? You buy a newspaper. What for I need a newspaper suddenly? Because suddenly, Luigi, you need two things. Job and a place to live. But, but Pasquale, I got a lease. Next month is a finish of your lease. But I'm going to pay my rent. Where you get the money? If I don't sell antique, then you lend me money. I lend you money. Every month, I'm lending you money to pay me my rent because you got a lease. <laughs> Luigi, from now on, is a no more lend a lease. <laughs> but, Pasquale, my business. Business? You make me laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Business. Where's your customers? Only customer you got is a Greek lady, Mrs. Pandora's or something. Everybody's doing a business. Grocery stores are selling, department stores are selling, even the post offices are selling more stamps this year than the last. But you... Business is a little slow right now. Slow is a boulevard stop. <laughs> no, Luigi, my friend. I'm going to do you a big favor. I'm going to throw you out. <laughs> then maybe you find a job in some new business. I don't know any business. Then I give you a chance to learn a restaurant a business. That's a business. People always eat, and that's a necessity of business. Not the like a... Antiques. Last night, I have 200 people eating supper in my place. 200 people? It's against the fire law to have more than 100. Not to when the 200 people is a 200 firemen. <laughs> <laughs> All the night long, and my wife, Teresa, she's a cooking, and I'm a carrying a spaghetti, a ravioli, minestrone. She's a cooking, and I'm a carrying, I'm a carrying, and she's a cooking. It's at 2 o'clock in the morning before I get a chance to eat. Was the food good? Who knows? We go eat at a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you make a lot of money last night, huh? You betcha I make money. I make money all the time. But you, you never gonna make any money. Please, Pasquale, give me a little time. I sell antiques. I advertise in the paper. I'm gonna advertise on the radio. Antique business is no good. Maybe I don't go into other businesses. What? Maybe I get a job teaching English to foreigners. You foolish man, Luigi. But Pasquale, your friend, knows the way to clear all of your problems. And you have a Merry Christmas if you marry. What do you say, my son? Goodbye, Papa. And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, maybe Pasquale's right. Maybe I know run antique business is good. So I have a big talk with myself, and now I'm going to be a first-class businessman, just like other Chicago fella, Mr. Sears Roebuck. <laughs> I'm going to sell everything in my store. And if a customer don't pay me his price, or if he don't pay me my price, I compromise. I sell it to his price. Also, I'm not going to be afraid of Pasquale anymore. So I go right the way over to see him. Pasquale, i like to see you. Not for now. I'm busy with important fella. Run along, little antique man. I'm coming to see you later. Okay, Pasquale. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Johnson, and before we interrupt you... That's the fella. You know him? Sure, I'm bringing him to this country. I'm his landlord. He's my best friend. He's a very peculiar guy. I hate him. I'm going to throw him out. <laughs> before you do that, get me that silver cup he has in his window. i will give you one of my cups, Mr. Johnson. No, no, no. I was in there and offered him $100 for it. You want to spend $100 for that the mug? Yep. I'll get you all the mugs in the Chicago you want, fifty dollars a piece. I'll even go to a hundred and twenty-five. A hundred and twenty-five. I bet it don't cost that much when it's a brand new. Well, naturally, the older an antique, the more it's worth. I've done you a couple of important favors, Pasquale, and so, so you help me with my license, so you a friend of the judge. I want to give that cup to my wife for Christmas. She's nuts for cups. <laughs> Mister Johnson. You go home, I buy it for you. And don't worry, 
Sooner your wife is going to be nuttier than ever. Okay. <laughs> now call me as soon as it's in your hands. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. I'm sorry I was busy when you come in. What do you want to see me about? Please, Pasquale, maybe you change your mind about the lease. Maybe you don't to push me out. Push you out? Who's going to push you out? You. You don't remember? I hear you with my own eyes. <laughs> Must be another Pasquale, Luigi. It's impossible. It can't be two Pasquales. Oh, you're wrong, Luigi. It's a big tragedy in my life because it is the two Pasquales. Luigi, I'm a little double life. I'm a man with two faces. Must be extra work when you shave in the morning. <laughs> now, don't make a father, Luigi. It's really two Pasquales. He's the one Pasquale who's a mean, a selfish. All the time he's a hollering, pay me my money or marry a rosa. That's you. Then is the other Pasquale. He's a gentle fella. He's a kind to people. He's happy to lend a certain people the money. Is it too bad that the Pasquale he don't come to America? <laughs> Luigi, you must forgive me things I do sometimes. It only happens when the bad Pasquale he wins over the good Pasquale. Pasquale, you ever hear of a Dr. Jekyll? Where has he got his office? <laughs> Is a story, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. See, is a one man outside, but inside is a two. I explain. Please, Luigi, no explanation. I'm gonna come over here now to help you out. You're gonna help me out of store? Stop for this foolish talk. It's Christmas time. I'm gonna give you a little money. You're gonna give me money? Sure, here's a $25. Take it before Mr. Hyde, he grabs it back. <laughs> No, Pasquale, I know can take money just like that. Is it no use of being a proud of Luigi? I'm your countryman, your friend, a take. But how I pay you back? Well, if you feel that way, um, maybe you sell me antique for my money, huh? Then it's a strictly a business deal. I never think of you interested in statues. No, not a statues. I'm thinking about that cup you have at the window. What the for you want to that cup? I'm very much interested in that cup. Oh, sure. It's all the colonial. Maybe even a Washington sip a little wine from that cup. Ah, George Washington, eh? Then I tell you what I do. I put this cup in my window, and I put up a little sign. George Washington a sip to here. <laughs> it's a nice idea, Pasquale, but I'm a paying $50. I'm losing the money if I sell for $25. i am only sorry for you for $25 a worth. Then I don't sell. Okay, I give you $50. When a Pasquale is the one to help a friend, expenses are no object, as long as it doesn't cost the money. <laughs> Why do you suddenly want to buy this a cup? I love antique cups. Since when? Since uh, before. What the happens? Luigi, you ever catch me telling the truth to before? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luigi, I'm going to come clean. He's a big political fella, Mr. Johnson. He's a do me lots of favors. Uh -huh. He's a bring lots of customers into my store. Oh. I promise him a cup for his wife. I'm sorry for you, Pasquale. Luigi, if I don't get this cup for him, I'm a ruin. Mr. Johnson, he don't do me favors. He's a friend. They all stop eating in my place. Then what? They eat in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> but I'm going to go bankrupt. I'm going to kill myself. Goodbye, Pasquale. <laughs> it's the last straw. Comes at the end of the month, out. There's no more antique stores. It's going to be Schultz as a delicatessen. <laughs> no more antiques. Hot dogs. I'm going to fix How it. much of this a politician, a fellow, he offered for cups? Hundred dollars. You tell her the truth, Pasquale? Luigi, would I lie for twenty-five dollars a profit? <laughs> How are you suddenly make a twenty-five dollar profit? It's just simple, Mr. Johnson. He's off for a hundred dollars for the cup. I'm gonna give you seventy-five dollars. You make a twenty-five dollars. I make a twenty-five dollars. It's a fifty-fifty. What do you say, Luigi? And take a cup and now cost a hundred dollars. But, uh, Luigi, you pay $50 for a cup of this morning. Why is it suddenly $50 or more? Antique is now eight hours older and is worth more. 
All right, Luigi. I'm never going to forget this. Here, here's a hundred. Is a one the condition? Pasquale, you ever hear of a bill of rights? I'm no interested in your bills. Is it not to my bill? Is a government the bill? All right, so when they send to me, I pay. No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. Bill of rights is from old days. You ever hear of a Jefferson? Sure, sure. It's a street to here in Chicago. <laughs> no, not that the one. Thomas Jefferson, he's the right to this, the Bill of Rights. I explain. Oh. See, Pasquale, after the Revolutionary War, they make first the Constitution. I don't care what they make. I'm interested in the cop. So Mr. Jefferson, he say, must protect the people. Must guarantee... Luigi, when I'm on a history lesson, I'm going to go to the newsreel of the theater. <laughs> What's the Bill of Rights got to do with a cop? If you want to buy cup, then you sign Luigi Bosco Bill of Rights. Okay, I sign. First, first I must write. Right. First, read them of a press. Read them of a press? Means you must never press me to marry Rosa. <laughs> sign the hill. Okay, I sign, and now sell me the cup. Next is the freedom of a speech. What's that? Means you're free to make a speech to me about anything except the Marion Rosa. <laughs> Luigi, that's a very hard condition. I'm a Rosa as a papa. If I'm gonna ask you to marry her, who's it gonna ask you? Sign up, Pasquale. How's about it? I'm only can ask you on a Sunday. <laughs> well, okay. I make amendment to Pasquale. You promise you'll never ask me to marry Rosa, especially on a Sunday. <laughs> sign it here. Okay, I sign. Now the cup. Wait, Pasquale. Now I hang up for Luigi Bosco Bill of Rights next to this picture of a Jefferson. Well, you can see it all of the time. All right, all right. Give me the cup. First, give me the hundred dollars. Here. Thank you, Pasquale. Ha, I'm a really good businessman, no, Pasquale? <laughs> You're improving, Luigi. <laughs> Buddy, you still got to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to be the Pasquale. Now, I'm going to sell this a cup for $125. So how you like that? Eh? Mamma mia. Mind if I use your phone, my good business friend? Ah, bravo, Figaro, bravo, bravissime, fortunatissime, fortunatissime, fortunatissime. Hello, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Pasquale, I got a good news. I buy the cup for $125, but I'm going to sign of my life away to get this. What do you say, Mr. Johnson? Huh? <laughs> you don't want the cup? <laughs> Your wife has a new hobby? Collecting $100 hats? <laughs> no, I'm no angry, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Goodbye. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> well, Pasquale, you still own beautiful antique cup. Sure. It's just what I need for my restaurant. <laughs> I'm going to serve a five cent of coffee in a hundred dollar cup. <laughs> I hope for my customers that they choke. <laughs> Here, Luigi, buy back your cup. How much do you want for it? What do you mean, how much? The same price I pay, $100. I give you $75, Pasquale. Is it now second to hand? Luis! <laughs> give me $100. If I'm a seller for $100 and buying it for $100, there's no profit. No, I give you $75. Is this your best price? <laughs> Is it $25 more than I paid for it? Okay. Here. Now, here's the $75. You come in again at some time, Pasquale. It's a pleasure to do business with you. <laughs> Mr. Bosco. I'm a Luigi Bosco. Yes, I'm Dr. Simpson, the oh. curator at the museum. You telephoned me this morning. Oh, yes. It's a pleasure, Dr. Simpson. Uh, where is the car? It's right here. Yeah. Oh, yes. This looks authentic. I'll just take it back here into the line. Shh, shh. Luigi, who is this fella? It's a Dr. Simpson. He's a friend of Dr. Jekyll. He, he's a curator. What does he cure? Nothing. <laughs> then why you call him a doctor? He's a know about antiques. Oh, then he's a cure antiques, eh? Shh, shh. 
This cup looks to me as if it might have been made by Benjamin Bird. Uh, who's this uh, Benny Bird? <laughs> One of our early silversmiths. Oh, it's a priceless piece, Mr. Vasco. How much? Well, I wouldn't want to say exactly, but I can tell you this. The museum would give a lot to own this one. Here, Mr. Vasco. Luigi, take your hands off of my beautiful cup. So it belongs to you. I'm buying this a cup of backer from you, Luigi. Here's your $75. Oh, no, Pasquale. Every time I sell you the cup, is $100, you remember? <laughs> is it worth $100, the doctor? Well, all I can tell you, sir, is that if you love silver, this cup is extremely precious. Suppose I don't love a silver. How much is it worth? <laughs> I only appraise these items for their artistic value, not their monetary worth. But I would say that it's worth... Uh, never mind, uh, Doctor, before Luigi changes his mind. Uh, here's a hundred dollars, uh, Luigi. Give me the cup. Okay, Pasquale. Now, Doctor, say as much as you like. I'm a listening. <laughs> Oh, you're a lucky man, Mr. Pasquale. Okay, what's your bid? But, Mr. Pasquale... Uh, $500? Mr. Pasquale, our museum would love to own this cup if you were willing to donate it. <laughs> what's it mean, Donate. <laughs> That's a for dunking, donates, is that? <laughs> no. No, Pasquale. Donate is the meaning you give a museum of the cup for free. Free? <laughs> what do you think? Pasquale's crazy? <laughs> Just to think, Pasquale. Every day, thousands of people, they go to a museum just to see your free cup. Is there no Pasquale cup there? As you wish, Mr. Pasquale. Well, Please, I... please, Dr. Simpson, just one minute. Pasquale. I'm not to listen, Luigi. Pasquale, inside you now is a Dr. Jekyll, and he fights with a Mr. Hyde. This fight, I'm a betting on a Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Pasquale, it's a big mistake. You rich fella, you give a museum of this a cup. It's a wonderful thing for all Italian people when you do this. It to show them you kind man, a good man. And every day is a thousands of people they see your name on a little piece of bronze under the cup. Hmm. A little piece of bronze. A doctor, maybe next to my name you put something else? What would you like us to add, Mr. Pasquale? Uh, just to say, uh, this is a beautiful cup donated by Mr. Pasquale, 23 North the whole State of Street, especially this week, a blue plate at dinner, two and a quarter. Mamma mia! <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, I'm making a little money. So, Jimmy and I, we're going to have a nice Christmas. Maybe we go ice skating in a lake. Rosa, she says she want to go too. But if she fall once, there's no more ice skating a season. <laughs> it's a start the rowing a season again. <laughs> anyway, Mamma Mia, I'm wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Is the most wonderful sound in the whole world when a church bells ring. And the people, every place, they shake hands and they say, Merry Christmas. Across the ocean, Mamma Mia, I send you best wishes for Merry Christmas and the peace on earth. P.S. Your loving son, Luigi, the little immigrant. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production that is written by Highcraft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.